Is it finally time for the Canadian men's basketball team to make its mark on the Olympic stage? Hey everyone, Rob Wong, joined alongside by Ryan Wolstadt, who will be keeping an eye on Olympic basketball in Paris. And Ryan, of course, everyone excited to see how Canada's men's team is going to do. It's going to been a long time since this team competed uh, at the Olympics. We talk a lot about uh, golden generations in international sports, and it seems like we're seeing that right now with this Canadian men's team. How realistic do you think a podium finish is? And is maybe a team like Team USA potentially vulnerable in this tournament? I think it's uh, it's a realistic thing. I think some people maybe are getting a little ahead of themselves. I, I know they're the the second favorites after the USA to win gold, and I mean that's it could happen. Look, uh, there's definitely a ton of talent. I think only the USA definitively has more talent than Canada. Uh, France is up there too, but they still have to figure out how to how to play with those all those big guys. Uh, together uh but canada definitely has a chance i mean shea gildas alexander just showed that he is one of the very best players in the whole world i mean i had him i had him first on my mvp ballot he finished second um he, he's amazing there's a lot of uh solid players really good defensive players on the roster uh jamal murray is finally there uh so there's definitely a chance but i wouldn't say favorites but i definitely think they can podium but they're just gonna have to uh, beat some really tough teams like their their group People have called it the group of the death because there's no easy team there. I think some people are maybe overrating Spain and Australia a little bit based on how amazing they've been for the last decade or so. They're not quite at that level anymore, but they're still really good, dangerous teams. Especially Australia's looked really good uh, in the lead up. And then you have to play Greece and Giannis uh, as maybe the worst team. And they're still like a decent squad. I think they're all ranked inside the top 10 in the, in the whole group in F the FIBA ranking. So none of them will be easy. And then once you have to finish top two, or be one of the three, uh, it's a little confusing with the math, but one, one of the three best uh, third place teams, or one of the two best third place teams, that's what it is, to, to advance. And then you just got to hope that you don't run into the Americans uh, in that next knockout round, because that's where it seems to always get tough. Even when you're talking about back to 2000, Canada looked great with Steve Nash and young Rowan Barrett leading the way. Uh, they were cruising, and then they, uh, when it was a single game elimination, they ran it to France, I believe, and that was it, and the dream was dead. So Canada's going to have to avoid that fate this time. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge, like you said, but this is about as good of an opportunity as they've uh, ever had, uh, really, when it comes down to it. And you talked about Jamal Murray, who is uh, on this team, and uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander, who had a, a monster season a year ago. When you look at these two guys, they're clearly the headliners on Team Canada, but is one more important than the other uh, when it comes to this roster? I think Shea definitely is. I mean, he's the guy that, that does everything. Um, I think Murray at this point is kind of like as nice of a bonus as you can get. It's kind of similar to Kevin Durant with the Americans. Like they're, they're both clearly not a hundred percent, but they're as those two are two of probably the five best clutch players in the entire NBA. So they're massive when you're in a close game, I think. But if either USA or Canada relies on Durant or Murray to really carry them, I think that then they're asking for trouble. Cause I just don't think, they're capable of holding up for a tournament at this point, but they're really going to be huge, huge factors because of just how great they are in the clutch. I'd love to see Murray looking a little asprier. They held him out of some games. They limited his minutes. He obviously was hurt for a lot of this season and Denver underachieved, which was actually good news for Canada because they went out early in the playoffs. Uh, but I think Shea's definitely the key. He's the head of the snake, as they say. He's the best player. He's going to be the best player on the court in every game, except for uh, maybe if they take on USA or Serbia. Um, so he, he's there who's he's either gonna have to rely on but Murray's definitely gonna be important uh, as well so when we look beyond those two there's gonna be a, a ton of key players for Canada of course uh, Dylan Brooks was incredible in this run-up to the Olympics uh, a guy like Dwight Powell has been strong Kelly Olynyk, uh, even a guy like Lou Dort who you talked about before when it comes to the defensive side of the ball uh, when it comes to the X factors are there maybe one or two guys that you think are going to be key if Canada does indeed want to make a run well I know I said Murray's kind of like an insurance policy kind of guy but I think he's going to be key if if he uh, shows anything close to what he's shown in the playoffs for Denver in the past that's going to be massive uh, for Canada and I think the other big addition that no one's really talking about is Andrew Nemhart of the Pacers who was fantastic in the playoffs um, he's a really, really good player and he's exactly what they needed a more point guard depth behind Shea or to play alongside Shea. And he looked really good in, in the tune up games. So I think he's going to be a huge part of it. You mentioned Dwight Powell. He he's going to be really important because Canada's biggest weakness by far is up front. 
Um, so Powell kind of is a glue guy. I think Ken Birch is a little underrated. He should be able to play some minutes, um, giving them some help off the bench. Uh, Cause that's where they're really limited. They don't have a seven foot guy. You know, they could add seven foot four Zach Eady, but unfortunately Memphis wouldn't let him play. Uh, so that, that was unfortunate, but I think those are the kind of guys in the past we've seen the Kale Alexander Walker, Lou Dort. And I think Dylan Brooks is also the guy you mentioned. He's kind of like a weather vane for them when he's going really well. Canada's almost always, uh, playing at its best. And when he's having an off night, it's a lot harder for the rest of the guys to, to, to get over the hump as well. Well, it should be a heck of a tournament. Uh, as I said, people in this country, fans of basketball in this country, have been waiting a long time to uh, see this men's team back on the Olympic stage and should be a heck of a game uh, coming up on uh, Saturday and the first one uh, as the Canadians will get things going. As always, you can leave your thoughts in the comments section below and you can find all of Ryan's Olympic basketball coverage at the National Post.